All right, so here we have a proposed vector addition. Um, well, first, the space itself is going to be pairs of real numbers, x, y. And we have a proposed vector addition where x1, y1 plus x2, y2 is 4x1, 4x2 plus 4, or comma 4y1 plus 4y2. Where plus, that plus is the standard plus. And then we have a proposed scalar product or scalar multiplication which behaves like typical scalar multiplication cxy is cxcy and we want to show that despite modifying the sum in this way that this operation still respects the distribution law over vector addition i.e that c product x1 y1 plus x2 y2 is c product x1 y1 plus c product x2 y2 and so in the usual way we show equality between two things we'll start with the left hand side and use valid operations to achieve the right hand side so let's start with the left hand side here we have c product x1 y1 sum x2 y2 now on the left hand side right what we want to do is we want to evaluate what's inside the parentheses first and so by the definition of our sum we can go ahead and rewrite that to be c product 4x1 plus 4x2 comma 4y1 plus 4y2 all right and now we can go ahead and evaluate the scalar product and good for us the scalar product is just multiplying Uh, coordinate wise in the usual way all right so here we have what happens when we take the vector sum and then introduce our scalar product now what's going on in I have two entries here right this is the first entry and this is the second entry but what's going on within the individual entries is good old-fashioned regular multiplication and addition so thankfully we get to use all of the usual rules and facts that we've come to know and love about these things. So I can rewrite my entries here as C 4x1 plus C 4x2 comma C 4y1 plus C or y2 now note that in the same way that the sum of products of 4 is equal to with inside the entries is equal to the vector sum of the pairs themselves I can take uh, these products of 4 and move it backwards to be a vector sum as well. So by going backwards, I can say, well, what this is equal to is CX1, CX2, vector sum, CY1, CY2. Do we see that? Let's take a moment and think about this, right? If I were to actually start here and go back this way, I would get four times CX1 plus four times, uh, sorry, I miswrote a little bit here. This should be Y1 
and this should be x2, y2. But if I were to write this out, right, the cx1 plus cx2 would become 4cx1 plus 4cx2, and similarly cy1 plus cy2 becomes 4cy1 plus 4cy2. And then finally, I can use the distribution property of the scalar product to factor out the C's, and that will give me C circle dot x1, y1, vector sum C circle dot x2, y2, which is exactly what we want to show that this was equal to. So to kind of go back through and annotate this a little bit, in this step here, we use the property of the vector sum, right? And that in the next property here, we use the scalar product or the scalar multiplication. And in the next sum here, what we just did was regular distribution, right? Because this is going on within the entries, and what's going on in the entries was all regular real number addition and multiplication. And then to go backwards here again, we use the vector sum once again, and finally we use the scalar product or the scalar multiplication in this last step. So this all put together shows using valid rules that this strange uh, vector sum and not so strange scalar product when put together uh, respects still the distributive law of uh, scalar multiplication over the vector sum. All right, thank you.